Total perfection. Siba wins best in show at Westminster. I, have you guys seen this? So um, last week I covered some of the PA dogs that were going to Westminster show. And the if you have, you know live under a rock, <laughs> you probably don't know. But if you don't live under a rock, you probably know that a poodle won Westminster best in show the other week. And his name is Siba. He's a standard poodle and he was like dressed to the nines with the grooming job um, his handler has. And uh, let's see what they have to say about this. So New York, primed and poised, Siba the standard poodle owned the ring. Even with the crowd at Madison Square Garden chanting for a popular golden retriever, the statuesque Siba strutted off with his best in show at the Westminster Club on Tuesday night. Adorned with black puffs and pom-poms, <laughs> the three-year-old Siba was the absolute picture of what many see as the epitome of a show dog. <laughs> I mean, I, I would have to agree with that. If you think of a frou-frou dog, what the first one you I, I think of personally is a poodle that's dressed to the nines. Not everyone shared this view. As, ju as Judge Bob Slay studied Siba in the best of seven final ring, a fan shouted out, no way, Slay, no way. Slay stuck by what he saw. She's beautiful and has that something, handler Crystal Murray class said. <laughs> she has that something. Bourbon, the Whippet, finished second. Daniel, the Golden Retriever, was clearly the crowd favorite. A Golden has never won at Westminster. Yeah, I was reading this the other day, and I don't think I covered this last week, where there hasn't been a Golden Retriever in the history of Westminster that's actually won. And fans chanted his name as Slay Deliberated. Bono, the Havanese, Wilma, the Boxer, Conrad, the Shepherd, Shetland Sheepdog and Vinny, the Wire Fox Terrier, also made the final grouping. And there's a, there's, a, to go back onto Daniel the Golden Retriever, there's been kind of a, um, people are thinking there's a bias towards more exotic breeds or the ones you don't see every day. And, you know, Golden Retrievers, I, I personally don't see Golden Retrievers every day, but they are one of the more popular breeds out there compared to poodles. I mean, <laughs> can we get, just go on to doodle mixes for a second? Because nobody likes their coats. Uh, nobody likes the like labradoodle or golden doodle mixes because their coats are terrible. Um, groomers especially hate them and they just get into a tangled mess and are very difficult to deal with. Meanwhile, at me on my training end, I get a lot of really like hyped up, smart, over energetic golden doodles and the owners can't handle them because that's not what they were looking for in a dog. They wanted something calmer um, and they're just more, you know, it, it, it's, it's like their personalities aren't as even when you start mixing them. I don't know. Uh, check in the chat. Christina says, I've heard they are water dogs and the thought behind the haircut is to keep the fur in areas where warmth was needed, hence the chest and joints. Have you heard this uh, about poodles? No, I have not heard anything in particular about poodles. Hi, hi, Liz. Happy to see you here. Hi, Jenny. Nice to see you here. Uh, do, 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 do. Poodles come in three sizes, and this was the 10th time one of them has become America's top dog since 2002. A standard one lasts in 1991. Do you guys have your wine? Because I have mine. Siba put on an entertaining performance. Listen, when I think of entertaining performance with a dog, it's not a show ring. That's got to be the most boring performance a dog could do. <laughs> they just walk around in a circle. I don't know. What is this entertaining performance they speak of? In the non-sporting group judging Monday night, doing the downward dog yoga pose before circling the ring. Wow, a, 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 like, a, like a dog stretch. The dog stretched, so it's entertaining. Uh, a day later, she was again at her best. Wow, amazing. <laughs> 
She won't get much rest either. Siva was set to wake up early to hit the morning TV shows, eat lunch at famed Manhattan restaurant Sardi's, pose on the observation deck of the Empire State Building, and perhaps walk into the stage at Broadway musical Beetlejuice. Wow, Westminster dogs, they live in the high life. The Westminster winner receives no prize money in a sport where owners can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their pet, which is very true. Instead, the reward is a silver bowl, lucrative breeding rights, and a lifetime of bragging rights in dog lore. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love the writing of this article. It's hysterical. I love it. They're just trying to build it up. And there's, I, I personally don't think there's much there other than a lot of dogs in one space. And in canine competitions, the poodles often rule. But this is true too in the world of dogdom. Among all the beagles, retrievers and terriers, there's nothing that polarizes people like a poodle. I, I would cross out poodle and write in doodle, any kind of <laughs> doodle mix. Especially the big standard size with, with their fancy coifs that would put the supermodels now in town for fashion week to shame. Someone lives in New York who wrote this. <laughs> Wait, who wrote this article? Index Journal in Greenwood, South Carolina. Oh, come on. Oh, and then it says the, I think the, the original writer is from New York, but it's, in, I don't, I don't, okay. I, I, it's a, okay, uh, where were we? Oh, they you say pageants. Oh my goodness. Okay, entertaining performance, Westminster Roof sees no prize money, who's often rule, who's, okay. Especially the big standard size with their fancy coifs and what put the supermodels now in town for fashion week to shame. I don't care for the cut. I understand it's for function to keep the joints warm. Ah, Christina, that answers your question. But not for me, Carol Sebastian of Aberdeen, New Jersey said earlier in that day. You either love them or you hate them. Let's check in on the chat here. Oh, there we go. Liz says yes about poodles, about their stuff, their poofy stuff around their joints. Do, do, do. I think if they cut poodle in a different way, they'd have a lot more fans. They'll go get beyond fruit. <laughs> they'd get beyond fru fru. <laughs> Either way, Steve Bashir looks the part of the Park Avenue crowd, even though she's from Allentown, Pennsylvania. <gasps> Guys, that's my town. Guys, that's your town. Christina. <laughs> you have to keep an eye out for Seema, the black poodle. And then like invite her to, to lunch in like, I don't know, a fru fru place and do a photo shoot. <laughs> I always say, don't let the haircut fool you. This is a smart, athletic, active dog that was originally developed in Germany as a water retrieving dog. Longtime dog expert Dave Frey said. With a more simple trim, he figured, the world could unabashedly root for them. In the meantime, I will anyway. Good for you. Do what you need. Do what you want. <laughs> I love this article. This was fantastic. <laughs> That was great. Oh, all right, what's the next one? Service dogs, what they are and what they do. So I like to go over the service dog articles because a lot of the time, even the local papers get service dogs, ESA dogs and therapy dogs messed up. Or if they're specific, or if they're specifically talking about service dogs in an article like this article's doing, they will slip up and mention emotional support animal or therapy dog and interchange the terms. So what I would like to do today is see, oh shit, oh wait, wait maybe they got it right. I think they got it right, okay. <laughs> see how good this article does. And I will convey to you guys if they got it right, if it's mostly right, if it's all BS, we'll see. We'll have fun, this will be good. And then, I mean, maybe I can quiz you guys too. Christina says, lunch with our mutts. Yes, bring the fancy poodle over. Have some lunch, make some sandwiches. Serve them in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is the final segment in our series to showcase and differentiate between emotional support animals, therapy dogs or animals, and service dogs. There's more to this? 
okay, this is already ringing good. Um, it already sounds like this is a promising article, so maybe I don't have to bash them at all. Let's, let's see, let's continue. There's a lot of confusion about what each designation means and where and how animals in each of these categories can legally and legitimately be used to assist their handlers or the recipients of their services. That's nice, I'm liking this already. This week's call will focus on service dogs, what they are, how they can be of assistance to others. What is a service dog? The American with Disabilities Act, the ADA, defines a service dog as, quote unquote, a dog that is individually trained to do work to or perform tasks for a person with a disability. Good, you guys checked the source, I'm happy. <laughs> they further define the concept of disability as a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities, including people with history of such an impairment and people perceived by others as having such an impairment. Okay, cool. Legally, they are considered a medical device, not a pet. What do they do? Under these parameters, a legitimate service dog is one that has been trained to assist with demands of daily life. The tasks they perform are directly related to the disability or disabilities, which is usually the case, of their handler. Dogs have been helping their handlers since the 1920s when the Seeing Eye Dog program began, which, by the way, the passing rates for those programs were like maybe 20%. Not a bragging point. If you're a good trainer, you should have higher passing rates. <laughs> Today, sir, that's beside the point. Today, service dogs may retrieve dropped items, open doors, pull a lightweight wheelchair, and more. Hearing dogs alert their deaf and hard of hearing owners to important sounds in their environment. Medical alert dogs can alert their owners to a drop in blood sugar or an impending seizure and may be able to summon help before a medical emergency occurs. Psychiatric service dogs, oh, you're going through each and every one of these certain types of service dogs. This is perfect. Psychiatric service dogs have proven invaluable to veterans returning from combat, as well as others with mental and psychological disabilities, such as PTSD, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, and more. Seeing eye dogs allow a blind and visually impaired, you guys know that. Although the most commonly used breeds of dogs trained as service dogs are labs, German Shepherds and Golden Retrievers, any breed, or a mix of breeds can be employed as a service dog, which is true as long as they are physically able to assist their handler. This is true. However, I will add a caveat where, since I work with these you know, people who have a dream type dog and they have a disability, sometimes they will try to fit in their dream dog to fit in with their disability for work. And that is not always a good choice. Um, most often it's not a good choice, <laughs> especially if you end up having a degenerative disease. You might, you know, have a dream animal of a King Cavalier's Charles Spaniel, but if you have a degenerative disease, you probably are going to need a mobility assistance dog, uh, which I don't think they covered in the article here, but that would be a larger dog than a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The most important characteristics they must possess include being handler focused, able to ignore distractions and remaining attentive and responsive to their handler while working. Yes. So what does it take for a dog to become a service dog? Training time varies, ranging from six months. What? Yeah, who, who said that? <laughs> who said that? To approximately two years and at a cost of often exceeding $40,000. That's not technically true. So there, the programs that do charity work and give out like guiding service dogs for the blind, um, veteran organizations that give out, you know, uh, psychiatric service dogs for veterans, they did the uh, accounting on the dogs and it's anywhere from, you know, 40 to $60,000 for the amount, for the two or so years it takes to breed the dog, raise the dog, train the dog, you know, staff time, overhead, food, all uh, training time, the type of training that they're doing to get them out in two years, okay? It's not costing anybody that much amount of money that I've heard of. I mean, if you know somebody who spent that much on a service dog, let me know because that's information I would like to know about. Uh, but generally that's not what the actual like dollar cost of that someone's gonna be paying for. Right. All right, I'm gonna check it on the chat here real quick. 
Uh, Liz says, question, how do you feel that our current system in the U.S. could be improved to reduce the amount of service dog fraud and poor and inappropriately trained service dogs? Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you. Hi, Pete. What's going on? Um, that is a great question, Liz. So it's complicated, right? And the first thing I would do, I would like for, you know, the government to do is to get an agreement on what a service dog is, what an emotional support support animal is because as the way the laws are now between the FHA, the DOT and the ADA, they don't all agree on certain things. So example for the, the Department of Transportation with the rules that recently on January 22nd of this year, they put out new rules for dogs being able to go onto flights or not be able to go onto flights, what per paperwork's allowed uh, and who you're allowed to ask for. So for example, if you have a psychiatric service dog, the DOT says it's okay to ask for paperwork. And guess what? The ADA says if it's a service dog, you cannot ask for paperwork. It's not required at all. So there's already conflict within our own laws. And I think that needs to be fixed first and foremost. Um, there are some states that are having a bit of a crackdown on emotional support animals because people think that they are service dogs, which they are not. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again. Emotional support animals are not service animals. They do not, they are not allowed out in public. They are not allowed, you know, anywhere a dog is not normally allowed. They are allowed in housing, transportation. I feel like I'm forgetting one, but my, mainly housing and transportation. Okay, car, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. And housing. That's what it covers for emotional support animals. So I think that's really where it should start. Um, I, but, I, you know, I'm not an expert on policies or anything, but there are states that are taking it into their own hands and charging people with a misdemeanor fines and potential jail time for using an emotional support animal over a service dog and you know pretending to be a service dog so that's going to motivate people not to lie and to get their dogs trained if they actually need a service dog okay so this extensive training prepares the dog to perform reliably in any number of day-to-day -day situations and may also include training for the individual who will be receiving the dog but that depends on who you go to you know there is no standard there are organizations out there that, you know, have their own standards for service dogs, but there is no governmental oversight on that. Now, up in Canada, that's actually different. Canada, um, the cost for a service dog to like, start a program and to be in a program is really cheap. Someone was telling me it was like as cheap as a thousand bucks. Um, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's actually really good. Um, and the country has a list of service dog trainers in the area. I don't know how they screen them. I don't know if they're legit or what their passing rates are or if they're, they have to be force free or if they're allowed to use abusive training techniques such as prong, choke and shock collars. Like, I don't know these things. Um, I would definitely like to learn more about Canada and its service dog laws, but I do know it's a lot more restrictive than the US law because in U the US, anybody can train their own service dog. Um, yeah. They just have to be well behaved in public. So very, very low bar. <laughs> okay, professional service dog training organizations are located throughout the United States. That is a fact, good job. <laughs> Although it is not mandatory for service dogs to be professionally trained, what I just go over, most individuals are not able to provide the required dedication and training to train their own service dog, correct? The AKC urges those who are considering, yeah, this is a new thing that the AKC started, a service dog to carefully research training facilities, and the AKC is trying to capitalize on the lack of service dog regulation with their own and thing that they're starting up, and I'm kind of feeling the ickiness already because they are not fear-free, force-free, they're okay with you using any kind of tool on your dog in order to get the job done. To them, the ends justify the means, and I am not okay with that. I am very strongly grounded in my values, and the ends don't justify the means for me. Sorry, find another way, get more creative. <laughs> you can train any behavior with positive reinforcement, any behavior. If you can't figure it out, 
then you're not creative enough and you're not a good enough trader. End of story. End of story. Okay. One local nonprofit organization, Service Paws of Central PA, who provides financial assistance for the purchase of certified service dogs only. See, and again, okay, this is what I don't like. Certified service dogs. There's no certification progress process for service dogs. You can start your own and say your dog's certified. No one's gonna stop you, but that means you can set your own priorities and pass any dog that you want. Um, so there's no oversight. And it's it's a false sense of security that you know these places are doing. Now they could say certified through ADI, which is um, Assistance Dogs International. I know they have a therapy dog certification. Um, I think they have a PA testing PA testing guidelines. Unfortunately, fake service dogs have become an epidemic. Yeah, tragically, the trend of fake service dogs is on the rise. Fake service dog vests, patches, and backpacks are available online for a nominal fee. Some for less than forty dollars. Some hundred dollars or more. <laughs> Side note. Not only is this practice unscrupulous, but it also does irreparable harm to the reputation of reliability trained service dogs and their handlers. Yep, because people will say, oh, I need to see your dog's ID so I can let him in here. No, you don't. It's not in the ADA law and you don't know the law. Now, some people will go ahead and buy their own, you know, fake IDs or make their own fake IDs just so that they don't get harassed and have a hard time. But at the same time, it is unfortunately perpetuating the problem of people thinking they need an ID, okay? Currently, 19 states are considering legislation to crack down on those who try to pass off their pets on service dogs. Okay, this is what I mentioned earlier. The end result, Leti, le why do they say legitimate, but legiti slash mate? Legitty slash mate dogs are being denied access, oh, whatever. Legitimate service dogs are being denied access to public places because business owners have had negative experiences with disruptive, poorly trained pets being passed off as service dogs. If that happens in a business, kick them out. And again, nobody knows the laws. Business owners don't even know the laws. If the dog is disturbing, the dog pees, the dog poops, the dog barks, does anything that you know the handler wouldn't be doing, kick them out. That's your right. That is 100% your right. They can't sue you for that. This misrepresentation does serious harm to those who rely on their service dogs to assist them in their daily lives. And the writer has been involved in rescue, dog performance sports, responsible pet ownership, and animal advocacy for more than 20 years. Cool. Well, she pretty much nailed this article. Right? I, I could say something. I mean, I've already, I've already told you every, all my thoughts on this, but I mean, she did a really good job. Um, I like it. Actually, an article that I actually like. Thank you. Good job, Altoona Mirror. Good job. Hi, Tom. What's going on? Okay, what do we got next? Firefighters. Oh, this one. Okay, I haven't seen this yet. I'm really excited. Firefighters rescue trapped dog after it climbed into onto Pennsylvania roof. Okay, they have video. It started a little bit. Oh, no. Restart. Okay, I'm going to expand this so you guys can see. Oh, this is fabulous. No! Don't make me scared. Stop it. Oh wait, that's that's the girl from Mad Men. What's her name? Anybody remember? Now she's in horror. Ah! No, wait, it started already. Okay, wait. Okay, let's somehow, and we don't know how. It's a husky! It all got itself in a bind when the pooch ended up on ah! the roof of this terrace home in Pennsylvania. Why are we not surprised? It's a Siberian husky, so it's looks like my neighbor's way. house. Firefighters had to get that dog down from the Lord. second floor. York City Department of Fire and Rescue Services shared video of this firefighter. Looks like downtown Allentown. that dog to safety, although for a second there, it looks like this it's dog a husky. does not want the help. Go it's figure. Happening. Again, we don't know how he got there in the first place. <laughs> they just keep replaying it. <laughs> wow. Love it. Hey, lady. How's Shh, your Shh, quiet. York, PA. Uh-oh, would your pup do this? A dog got itself in a bond with the pooch ended up on the roof of a terrace house in Pennsylvania. Firefighters had to get the dog down from the second floor. It appeared to be a Siberian Husky. No, you think? 
Many people were wondering the same thing. Any idea what it was doing on the roof? One person posted on Facebook. I bet you somebody like left their window open and it like walked across and down the roof because he was bored. <laughs> oh, shared a video carrying the dog to safety. Oh, is it, is it longer? Is this one longer? Because this is, this is from a, a phone angle view. Please try closing and reopening your browser window. What? Stop this. It's heresy. Uh, it's only 13 seconds long. It's probably the same thing. Okay, well, that was fun. What do you guys think of the Husky? That was ridiculous. Hi, Ingrid. You're at Walgreens. Well, nice to see ya. Hope I'm disturbing the peace and quiet at Walgreens. Thomas says, I have a friend in Tennessee who has seizures. She has two service dogs that alert when this happens. Mm, do they really though? She came up to PA to visit last month. We were in a store on Shonersville Road. It's just small, which shall be named, remain nameless. We don't want to make it famous. And an employee told her the dog was not allowed to walk in the store. Which store was this? Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. She had to hold the dog. The dog was not allowed to walk, but she could pick it up. That's, that's really weird. I have never heard of that before. Her dog had its vest on and she had all the paperwork. When we told the manager, all they wanted to do was take her name, number, and email. He didn't say anything to the employee. Okay, um, so just to let you know, Tom, um, you might want to rewind later on in the video, but um, service dogs, you know, don't require any paperwork. They also don't require to have a vest on. Um, that being said, it was that's just a really weird request from an employee. Maybe she was thinking allergies, he or she. That's really weird, but even then, like it states in the law that, you know, allergies is not a good excuse for, I'm sorry, the ADA law, ADA law specifically states that allergies or fear of dogs is not a good excuse to have a dog leave. So I know, right Ingrid, what paperwork? You don't need paperwork. You just need to have your dog well behaved. Jeez, okay. Um, next one, what do we got? Is this a video? Service, aha, differences between service and therapy dogs. Calif Ooh, California law gives special privileges to people who rely on a certified, what is this certified service animal? Now, okay, this being said, there are some states working on, and I think California might be one of them, like a voluntary registration, certification, something or other for service dogs. Voluntary, not required, but voluntary. So, um, yeah, I'm actually interested in learning what they say about this. Let's watch. California law gives special privileges to people who rely on certified service animals. But these days, a lot of people are getting doctor's notes or different sort of items to qualify their pet as a therapy. Yes, ESA only. No! No, you did it! That's wrong! No! Ah, okay, read that again. Okay, watch this again. Watch this again. Tell me what's wrong. A lot of people are getting doctor's notes or different sort of items to qualify their pet as a therapy app. What's wrong with that? Tell me, guys. Ingrid, you know this one. What's wrong with that? Hi, Carol. Hi, Renee. Nice to see you here. What is wrong with this story? Let me play it one more time. Start from the beginning. Uh, gives special privileges to people who rely on certified service animals. But these days, a lot of people are getting doctor's notes or different sort of items to qualify their pet as a therapy animal. Action News Network reporter Mackenzie Drigo joins us live in studio. Mackenzie, what's the difference here? Well, apparently the newscaster doesn't know the difference. Ingrid, don't let me down. What's the difference? What did she say that was wrong? You want me to watch it again? I'll watch it again. <laughs> One more time. 
special privileges to people who rely on certified service animals. But these days, a lot of people are getting doctor's notes or different sort of items to qualify their pet as a therapy animal. She just said it. What is required? Ingrid says, doctor's notes are only needed for ESAs. Yes, ESA, ESA, right? Okay. Therapy dog does not equal service dog. I didn't hear them say that necessarily. They do have a service dog vest on the screen when they said therapy dog. So yeah, that right off the bat is confusing and not correct. <laughs> so Liz, when you say certified, quote unquote, certified service animals, um, I believe, I'm going to have to double check this and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, California either already has laws in place or are currently looking for laws in place where you can have a voluntary certification for your service dog. So they they could be right on that, right? I don't, I'm not 100% on the laws of California. Christina says states service animals, but then she states therapy. Yep. Yep. And they... The only, and Ingrid's right, that the only animal that needs the paperwork or prescri physician's prescription is an emotional support animal. So, already we're off to a bad start. Let's finish this and see what else they have to say. Action News Now reporter Mackenzie Drigo joins us live in studio. Mackenzie, what's the difference here? Ah. Yes, a service dog is trained for one person to perform tasks where a therapy dog is for everyone. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> is that it? Not even, you didn't even go into emotional support animals. Okay. Well, it looks like we've got a service dog here and he's responding. He's doing a task. Okay. Sometimes he gives me a reason to live. He also has a giant shock collar around his neck. Obviously not from a real professional. So keep going and has saved me when I feel like I still don't have a reason. Service dogs can work by their owner's side at their job if the employer agrees. Therapy dogs are not trained to be specific handlers, but help more as volunteers. Yep. Rayleigh's is one of the local stores in Chico that employed Archer and Coda. I think it's a great idea. I mean, That's nice. if the service animal feels a seizure coming on, we don't know that the seizure is gonna come on to that. Okay, hold, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, okay. Before I finish this article, I will let you guys know there is no definitive evidence that a dog can be trained to alert for seizures. I want you to let that soak in for a bit. There is no current evidence that a dog can be specifically trained to alert to seizures. Now, that being said, some people claim that their dogs can naturally pick up when they are about to have a seizure. Who am I to argue with that single person, right? Yeah, we could test it out and see what reliability it is and do whatever kind of tests and, you know, just see how, how often the dog's actually accurate and how many seizures the person actually has. And you can calculate the percentage if the dog's actually doing it, right? <clears throat> but... Again, no definitive evidence yet, okay? You cannot actually train a seizure alert, but you can train a seizure response, okay? So there's a difference. There's alert and there's response. So alert would happen before a seizure begins. A response would happen after a seizure happens. So if you were to have a seizure in the middle of a parking lot, as you're walking over to, you know, Walmart, you can train the dog to drag you over up into a curb where you're going to be safer if you're passed out. So that is a dog responding to after the fact versus the no evidence to be trained for alerting to a seizure, okay? I wouldn't say no evidence, it's just no strong evidence a lot of personal anecdotes, those kind of things, right? Um, yeah. So go check out the chat here, see what you guys have to say about that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, Liz says, yeah, they imply it. Okay. So let's finish watching this. That person and the dog knows that and senses it, can jump in front of that person so it doesn't, the person doesn't smack his head on the cement floor. Um, I think it's a great idea. And in places like Rayleigh's needs to, 
um, keep doing the good deed of hiring people that have service animals and allowing it. And I think it's a good thing. Archer explains I mean, the difference. I mean, yeah, you should allow it. It's the law. Don't discriminate. You can't do that, um, even though it happens all the time, right? You're not allowed to, but it happens all the time. So the difference between a service dog and a therapy dog. First dog is task trained for one person. So it could be medical or psychiatric. So such as PTSD. Or mobility. Or Diabetes alert. Or alerts. Seizure alert dogs. Um, Allergy therapy alert. dogs are for everybody. So, you know, the, anybody can pet them. Anybody can go up to them. Um, they're and then what is this? Okay, did you notice down here, down below, it says service versus support animals? Listen. <sighs> we're a little, we're like almost three quarters of the way through here. They've already gotten several things wrong. The bottom, what's the word at the bottom of the screen called? The info, whatever. I don't know what that's called. That's wrong. The newscaster was wrong within the first five seconds. We're not even th three quarters of the way through here yet. Okay, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. Let's just watch it. Public's happiness. This is just one of the tricks that Coda knows how to do. Take... Bring, she called bring. it a trick, not a task. Thank you. God. The owner of a therapy dog oh, tells yes. us the difference on when you can touch a working dog. Service dogs is for one person. It's not to be pet for other people. It's not. It's not. At least a, they're getting that part um, right. It's like a, a seeing eye dog where you're not supposed to go up to them and pet them and, and get them not to focus on what they're doing. Yeah. Um, where it's opposite with therapy dog, they can be pet. And you don't even have to ask here if you can pet Landon. He's. I've given the kids permission just to come up and pet him. Um, but they know that a service dog, they need to ask permission. Bishop stressed the fact that it's very important not to touch a service dog while it's working and to make sure you're always asking the owner beforehand. It took Archer two years to train Coda. Reporting live in the That's studio, average, Mackenzie right? Drigo, Action News Now, coverage you can count on. California law. That's pretty typical, two years. Okay, well, what were your thoughts on that article slash news story what are your thoughts on that because they, i mean they tried at least they tried and they got i know they got consistently one piece of information right which was <laughs> service dogs are for one person <laughs> ingrid says only certain towns in california okay uh she did good though that's also true for headaches yeah i would imagine i, I wouldn't think there would be like a hormone or Anything we could sniff out for headaches. Hey, Stephanie, what's going on? Okay, next news story. Okay, this one's interesting too. <coughs> I haven't looked at any of these today. So, <laughs> this is interesting. Again, in Pennsylvania, why won't Coors Light help pay for PA dog adoptions? No one seems to know. Why won't Caitlin help pay for random people's dogs' adoptions? Because I'm broke. <laughs> Like, I don't understand. What is going on here? <gasps> They're so cute. Also, I drank my entirety of wine. I am a lightweight and I'm sorry. Cute. Um, what are they like? Aussie? Oh, what's the big white fluffy dog? Um, I know this dog and I can't seem to remember what it's called. But it's like the Aussie big white fluffy type of Related to a husky dog. I don't remember. Ah, okay, I forget. Um, yeah, let me know what you, if you think you agree with me, whatever that dog's name is. And if you know the dog's name, put it in the comments below. Or, you know, if you don't know the dog's name, put a unicorn in the comments below. The breed of the name, not the actual dog's name. I don't know if these guys are even named yet, but they're freaking cute. Okay, Pennsylvania SPCA Humane Law Enforcement Officers rescued 55 dogs from a property in Lancaster. Oh, go figure, it was probably a puppy mill, who was suffering in unsanitary conditions. Of course, Lancaster, that's where all the puppy mills are. Coors Light announced earlier this month that it would reimburse 1,000 people up to $100 of the cost of adopting a shelter dog. It's not a lot of money, but uh, cool. But not anyone in Pennsylvania. 
Why was Pennsylvania excluded? No one seems to know. It's probably a glitch in the system, to be honest. The company's Adopt-A-Dog campaign kicked off February 4th and ends February 21st. It's a way to save a dog, the beer maker said, as well as target millennials who were urged to make a canine in their valentine. Stop targeting us millennials. Come on. Come on. Okay. I know we all have like jobs and money now and we're not broke as much, but come on. <laughs> Dogs and beer are not a thing you put together. Okay, never mind. I'm kidding. We wanted to help empower people to savor the day. Not save the day, savor the day with Coors Light and a dog by their side. Marketing manager at Molson Coors, Chelsea Parker, said in a company statement. But the offer, available to people 21 older who adopt a shelter dog, specifically excluded residents of Pennsylvania and six other states. California, Louisiana, South Dakota, Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia. Okay, so this isn't a glitch in the system. It's specifically targeting states. I'm wondering if it has to do like with dog laws or registration or something. When reached through Facebook Messenger, a Coors Light representative said they wish Cores could help our fury fr furry friends in every state. Unfortunately, aha, I, I called it. Some state laws prohibit us from gifting over certain amounts, the representative said. So it's a thing about gifting, not like dog laws. Okay, that's interesting. But it's only a hundred bucks. You can't gift like over $20. That's so weird. I wonder what law they're talking about. Penn Live sought an answer from officials with the Pennsylvania Department of State and the Department of Agriculture, the State Liquor Control Board, and the offices of the Attorney General and Auditor General all said they didn't know why the campaign couldn't take place in PA. So nobody knows why. <laughs> okay. Uh, the agriculture, just start giving out adoptions then if it's not an issue. Uh, the agriculture department licenses shelters that offer dogs for adoption and enforces the dog state law, says Press Secretary Shannon Powers. She suggested asking Coors how they interpreted Pennsylvania law and whether it was, quote unquote, indeed, the dog law they are interpreting or some other body of Pennsylvania law, Powers said. The department did not interpret PA law for the company or consult with Coors on their giveaway rules. How do you know? Wait, who's, she said that? Wait, wait, let me read this again. She, uh, she suggested asking Coors how they interpreted Pennsylvania law and whether it was indeed. Okay, so she's, she's speaking for the company even though she doesn't work for the company. I don't know how she knows that. Uh, questionable, very questionable. Coors Light did not respond to additional questions about which state they are referencing. It's, I mean, honestly, it's such a small amount of money for this company. I don't know why they would care. Um, probably why you're not getting a response. The Department of State gave a similar reply. I'm told that our team here checked the Coors Light rules for this offer and could find nothing that applies to Pennsylvania solicitation of funds or for Charitable Purposes Act, which is administrated by our department. <sighs> Okay, but is anybody else checking whether or not the other states are also correct or not? Or are you just, are your panties just up in a bunch because you live in PA and you want your $100 adoption fee back? I mean, it's a hundred bucks, guys. Get over it. She suggested that there might be a revenue tax code consideration that we are not aware of or possibly issues involving the Liquor Control Board. Without the company stating the specific law they are referencing, I would be speculating. That's why I said the PA Liquor Control Board isn't involved. Both the PA department, this one's a puzzler, an estimated entrance uh, human society noted that. Same time, Coors Lives has his plans. Derek in Kansas City, she's paid adoption fees for all dogs in Kansas City. Okay, yeah, that happened. Um, when he heard, okay, and that's it. Like, they, they didn't even cross reference the other states and see if it was actually laws there or anything similar. I don't know. What do you think? I think I don't really care. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Liz says they look like Pomskis. Do they? They look huge though. Are Pomsky puppies that big? I thought that's how big Pomskis got when they were adults. They look like puppies which probably aren't going to be in a shelter or something bred intentionally. Yeah. Right. 
The Merle makes them look like Aussies. Yep. But again, I don't, I don't really see palm in there. I see Aussie face. I don't see palm face. Yes, yeah, Samoyed. That's what I'm thinking of, Liz. I'm thinking they're an Aussie Samoyed mix. Yes, Ingrid. Okay, Samoyed. Christina says Malamute. Do Malamutes come in Merle? That's probably a stupid question. They probably don't. Yeah, they do look like the Zyder dogs, Liz. The Merle craze has gotten out of control. There are so many double Merles coming from puppy mills and unscrupulous breeders. Yeah. Strange gifting law. I know, right? I have to get going, but I'm curious to see what you have to say about the Imperial story. Yeah, that's the last one. Um, there's that. So that one's huge. Okay, so I just finished this one. And okay, so this one's interesting. Um, oh, wow, there's a sound piece too. I'm not going to listen to it, but it, it's a very long article. Oh, it's not too bad, but it's a dense article. So Liz sent me this article earlier about diabetic alert dogs. And I mentioned to you guys earlier in this stream that there are no standards for organizations to follow. They can follow their own standards. And if a dog is giving only a 5% reliability of alerting to low blood sugar or blood, blood sugar, <laughs> blood sugar or blood sugar, uh, Jeffree Star, no, um, then that's their standard, right? I think it's unscrupulous of them. I think that you are not delivering on the product that you are selling for. And um, this is just something I wanna to have to read to you guys because this is a very dense article. There are actually some things that I wanna look into here because they're actually quoting some studies too. And I haven't looked at the studies yet. So there's, there's a lot of good stuff that I wanna look into with this article. It's a really good discussion piece. So. It's a few minutes before services on a Sunday morning at Bethany United Methodist Church in West Jefferson, North Carolina. The handbell choir warms up and an accolade lights candles. Church member Peggy Lynn Gibson, with this is her, that's Peggy Lynn, walks in with her dog, a stout cream colored golden retriever named Rocky. The congregants greet Rocky like an old friend. How are you? You're a sweetheart, one man says to the dog. And so are you, the man tells Gibson. Pastor Dan Money, hmm, Money, that's a good last name, <laughs> welcomes the congregation as Rocky, an honorary church member, settles in at Gibson's feet in a pew near the back. We love Rocky, right? And we love Peggy, Money says from the pulpit on the day NPR visited. <laughs> It's so, it's so contrived. Like, <laughs> we love Rocky, right? And we love Peggy. Like, who says that? Who says that? Okay. Gibson, a 67-year-old retired nurse, is one of more than a million Americans with type 1 diabetes, a difficult-to-manage autoimmune disease. People with the disease face a constant struggle to control the amount of sugar in their bloodstream. If it gets too low, it can lead to seizures, lock, loss of consciousness, or death. And Rocky was there to help. He's a diabetic alert dog, specially trained to smell dangerous changes in someone's blood sugar and alert them with a paw or a nudge before it becomes a medical emergency. And he was a gift from the church community. A Chili's lunch, a silent auction, even a concert by local musicians all helped with his $15,000 price tag. What? <laughs> what? What? Back at her home, just outside West Jefferson's. Back at her home, just outside West Jefferson's picture postcard downtown. Oh, okay, I'm reading that weird. Gibson talked about why she sought canine help. In these senior years, to quote Gibson, it became harder to recognize whether my blood sugar was going too high or whether it was going too low. That was partly what prompted me to look into getting a diabetic alert service dog, she says. But while Gibson obviously loves Rocky, he doesn't provide the service that she and her neighbors paid for. Unfortunately, that may be part of, that may be par for the course. The diabetic alert dog industry is unstandardized, what did I say, and largely unregulated. And the science of a dog's ability to reliably sniff out blood sugar change is, 
if, at best, inconclusive. See, I want to know what they're, why they're saying that. Why is it inconclusive? What study are they looking at? Because I want to see it. Hope and hype. Gibson says she was influenced by the online marketing campaign of Diabetic Alert Dogs of America, the Nevada company that sold Rocky. They have their stories on there about the dogs they've trained and the people they've placed them with. And, you know, it just seemed sound to me, Gibson says. If you research diabetic alert dogs, you'll find a lot of hope for their role in managing type 1, and you'll find a fair amount of hype. Television news stories about the dogs often uncritically accept their abilities, using words like incredible and amazing in fundraising campaigns. Would-be alert dog owners position them as critical solutions to their disease. Now, I'm, I feel this way about some other trainers out there, too, who are more into marketing than actually training skill. We won't go there. <laughs> um, NPR reviewed nearly 500 active GoFundMe campaigns that mentioned diabetic alert dog. More than a third used phrases like lifesaver or life-saving. Yeah, but these are people I don't have dogs yet. And it's also GoFundMe where everybody and their mom puts their medical bills on there because America. <laughs> dog training companies make similar claims. Several of them have faced lawsuits or complaints recently from consumers who bought diabetic alert dogs that say don't work. In Texas, a group of more than a dozen dog buyers sued a trainer for fraud and won a judgment for $800,000 in Virginia. The attorney general sued a service dog vendor vendor after customer complaints about its dogs, which were marketed, marketed as quote unquote backed by science and get this 100% effective. What? <laughs> what? Did you say 100%? Are you, what? Are you marketing? Are you marketing again? Would you like to sell your dog for $15,000 to the public and tell them it's 100% effective? Sure side of marketing, guys. Come on, what is this? What is this? The Virginia Attorney General claimed that the company Service Dogs by Warren Retrievers deceived consumers about the animal's abilities and costs. In many cases, simply selling a quote unquote $25,000 pet. Oh my gosh, people paid more than 15K. Company lawyer Glenn Franklin Kuntz tells an NPR's clients denies the allegations and calls the lawsuit baseless. He stands by the backed by science claim and adds a fully trained dog is 100% effective. Listen, what am, I can march down to, what is this place called? Service dogs by war retrievers and just sit back and count. Okay, how many trials are you going to try and, you know, get your dog to alert, to heal, to do a basic sit? Because no dog is 100% on their game all the time. That's a lie. Anybody who tells you your dog is going to be 100% is a liar and is just trying to get your money. Hence the $25,000 price tag. Guys, it's marketing, okay? You have, you have to get better at identifying marketing, especially when it comes to animals. Because um, a lot of times animals are just used and abused by trainers and they just, they just want you to spend the money for a $2,000 two-week board and train. If you don't know who I'm talking about, it's better that you don't. The reason it might take a lawsuit to fight back against perceived or actual shortcomings in an alert dog is that trainers and dogs generally aren't required by any authority or regulated to perform any particular standards. Correct. Like I mentioned earlier, there is Assistant Dogs International that do have some standards that you can voluntarily apply for, but really you have to hold yourself to that own standard. If you're just there to sell an expensive pet, you can do that. And... The consumer can't trust just anybody. This is a fact of the industry or conglomerate of people with dogs and don't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> well, Rocky was marketed, marketed as certified alert dog, what? right? What did I say? People make up the certifications, right? The certifi certification came only from the company that sold the dog. Yeah, I've been telling you this. Soon after Gibson got Rocky, it was clear to her that he wasn't cut out to be a service dog in public, especially in the windy high country of North Carolina. My screen is going dim. It's going yellow. I don't want it to go yellow yet. Gibson says Rocky is easily frightened by common noises, get this, such as umbrellas, 
motorcycles passing and can't work as an alert dog while he's scared. This is sacrilegious. Listen, this is wrong. This is so wrong. It's so wrong. Like how, how do you, how? How? The first day I had him out on my town, the wind blew up. He got so scared that he couldn't run fast enough to try to hide, Gibson says. It was just pure fear. And how a service dog is trained and raised and bred and everything, every little interaction when it's younger, leads up to a point like this. I don't know what happened to this dog. You know, I don't know if they use a shock collar to shock it continuously to get into a heel because nobody seems to know how to do a proper heel without using pain, fear, and force. Um, or they don't want to put in the work because it's much easier just to press a button and zap your dog. But like, I mean, this could be for any reason why the dog's being scared. They don't have a proper program, especially if they're selling a dog for $15,000 to this lady. I, I don't understand. Let me check it on the chat here. <clears throat> um, do, 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 do. Ingrid says, what the heck? 100% effective? Not ever, right? Poor woman. Yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous. That was in April of 2017, right after she had to sign a series of disclaimers as a condition of getting the dog. One document said Rocky, quote unquote, met my expectations as a diabetic alert dog, even though she only had two days experience with him. That's unacceptable. Two days experience of a new dog, that is unacceptable. No wonder he can't alert to her. He probably didn't even, wasn't even training for her uh, blood sugar scent. Another document said Rocky has, quote unquote, free will. It wasn't guaranteed to do what Gibson and her community paid $15,000 for. After you just said he's 100% effective. See, the fine print, you've really got to read. Um, I answered everything because I was so excited that he was there. I was positive, Gibson said. I was hoping everything was going to be wonderful. And then after the dust settled, everything wasn't wonderful. One paper she signed says Rocky wasn't guaranteed to, quote unquote, perform any specific action at any specific time. The sweeping disclaimer might sound at odds with an expensive purchase that people trust with their lives, but research on alert dogs suggests it might also be a reality check about the abilities of diabetic alert dog dogs in general. Again, they're throwing this stuff out here, and I need to know what research they're quoting. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the article when we're done and see if there's a resource to check out because I'm a little confused by this. So, aha, here's a study. Okay. University, what science says, University of Virginia psychologist Linda Gondner Frederick tracked the performance of 14, okay, so very small test size, um, not statistically useful, in 2017. Before the study, their owners believed the dogs would prove more accurate than their glucose monitor devices. That didn't happen. Yeah, but you're asking owners, right? Owners don't keep track of percentages of how your dog is actually performing like they don't they don't do that of course it's going to be done they're going to have confirmation bias right because people using whatever training device or had whatever um alert their, their dog did for them that day is going to remember that and keep it in their little log book in their memory and forget all the times it didn't actually happen that's confirmation bias people are not aware of it and they are not scrupulous enough for themselves so i mean it happens Overall, they really were not that reliable or accurate, she says. Of 14 dogs in the study, again, very small population size. I don't know what you're going to do with this number. Plus, where are the dogs coming from? How are they handled? Are they continuing training? Because they should always be continuing training um, just for re refining and making sure, you know, it doesn't go downhill. And I don't understand. Only three performed better than statistical chance. That's similar to what an Oregon researcher reported in 2016. Okay, wait, so there are studies... Oh no, I think this was, this one looks like it's a journal. Okay, they are, oh, okay, so these are journal articles. I'm not going to go over these tonight. Um, I also don't have journal access anymore. I need to find journal access again. 
in my life <laughs> for, for these reasons. Um, and I want to find other ones too, if there are any other, and like, like how they chose their dogs, where they were coming from. Like, I, I need to, I need to know things. Um, that's similar to what we're going, okay. The dogs in that say detected low blood sugar events 36% of the time, not even 50, 50. They also had false positives. I mean, dogs will have false positives, but, uh, only 12% of the dogs alerts happen during actual low blood sugar events. So that's really low. The dogs in the study detected low blood sugar. So how do we, oh, I hate statistics. Okay. Um, the study detected low blood sugar 36% of the time, but 12% happened during actual low sugar events. So are you saying it's like before, during, close to end? I need, uh, I need to know more. Uh, Gonder Frederick said some dog owners overestimate their beloved dog's talents, perhaps as they would a favored grandchild. People might notice or remember when the dog is accurate much more easily than they would notice or remember when the dog was not accurate. Yeah, confirmation bias. Uh, do, 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 the psychological. Do, 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 do. Uh, her research also contradicted what some believe or hope is true that the dogs can be a good safety net for those who worry about blood sugar dropping as they sleep. Some patients, no, some parents have turned to the dogs to safeguard their children during the night. Yeah, no, that's stupid. Um, the accuracy just plummeted during the night. Dogs have to sleep too. Obviously, a dog cannot work 24-7, and you should never leave a dog and a child unsupervised expecting them to do their job. That's just not how you, that, no, 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 no. There's not too much other research, but what does exist isn't more encouraging. A study published in 2015 and 19 was a British study did find good performance, but involved possible conflicts of interest. Both studies were co-written by the dogs, trainers, or suppliers. Authors of both articles tell NPR the arrangements did not amount to conflicts and didn't bias the studies. Well, I mean, if you're going to be publishing it from source, it's going to be biased, whether you realize it or not. It's just a fact of life. It's not something to get defensive about, you know, but if it's a good study and published by the people, then it's a good study. If it's biased, you know, there could be bias. Is it double blind? Double blind would give you the best. I don't know how you would do that for this type of study, but it would be interesting. And I would also like to know what their sizing of the cohorts were. Cohorts is just a group. It's a fancy term for a group of Things, <laughs> a group of things that you're studying. Um, a trainer's guarantee. Edwin Peebles, who co-owns Diabetic Alert Dogs of America, who sold her the $15,000 worth of dog that is a pet, says he has, that, that is scared, a scared pet, uh, says he has trained nearly 700 dogs and more than nine out of 10 of his clients are satisfied. I hate this. Too much man macho testosterone floating in the air here. He says issues like Gibson's where, where a dog can't perform well in public represents the toughest part of training an alert dog and that he does his best to train the dog to work in the owner's environment. And for dogs that don't work out, people says he has a training guarantee. But now it's your pet. What? So you're literally training a dog in one state, selling it, giving it a two day time to train the person and just throwing it in a new state, expecting the dog to be good and just relieving yourself of any, you're washing your hands of any responsibility for setting these people and these dogs up for failure. Like, guys, use your brain. This is marketing. People just want to sell you expensive pets, okay? Just use your brain. Use your brain. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Quote, unquote, they can bring the dog to my doorstep right here in Las Vegas. Oh, so he's in, he's in LA, okay. Our response will be, I will do my absolute best to try to fix it. And if I can't, you get a brand new dog. Yeah. Okay. But Jessica Moy, an Ohio mom with type 1 diabetes, has a long running dispute with Peoples and now runs an entire Facebook group dedicated to complaints about Peoples Company. Oh my God, I need to see this. She says the replacement dog guarantee can mean little when there's a child involved. So is this like a, is this a diabetic or is this like an, no, it has to be diabetic because... What is this? Diabetic Alert Dogs America complaints. True client experiences. Wow, that is the longest name for. Oh my God. Hello. 
prong and treats because <laughs> you got to be balanced because it makes sense. Lucky at the park. Oh my God. What? Oh, there's another dog. Here it comes. Oh, correct. Oh, ow. That was harsh. And the dog doesn't even care. Oh God. Oh my God. There just becomes a point where it, it does, I mean, I mean, it, it is abuse, but, um, so she has a prong collar on this dog. Um, and if you noticed it's fit properly. So a prong collar, you know, most people have it around here on their dog's neck, right? And you're supposed to correct your dog every time they do something wrong. And the people, the expert trainers out there who use and promote prong collars will say, well, actually, that's not the proper way to use a prong collar. You need to put it up high on the neck. Okay. Guess what happens when you put it high on the neck? Any guesses? It hurts more. Go, go. I mean, I, I have some extra prong collars around and I've tried it on myself and it doesn't take a lot of pressure, right? If you use the same amount of pressure here versus here, this one is much more painful. And this is very high on the dog's neck. It's quote unquote in the proper position and the dog is totally unfazed by it. He's way over threshold, dog's not paying attention. Um, you are damaging your animal's lymph nodes and his neck. The skin on a dog's neck is the most sensitive and thinnest part of the skin on the entirety of a dog's body. The neck is, okay? Um, what are you doing? You do not know what you're doing. Was that, I don't know if that was like their actual, cause see, you see they're wearing a green vest. I could actually read after dealing half month receiving an untrained dog from diabetic for two and a half years. We were so happy to bring awareness and bring some human company. Family pays. Oh, so this is from a, on their website. Thousands for service dogs. They say misbehave in public. This isn't just misbehaving. This is outright like reactivity. He's not barking, but it's not handleable. Damn. And again, I don't know. I don't know what it says on the side of the coat here. It might be a totally different dog. I would have to check out another news article, but you guys can check this out on your own time, okay? It's Diabetic Alert Dogs of America Complaints, True Client Experiences. Um, damn. Damn, what do you guys have to say about that? Um, do, 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 do. What do we got here? Yeah, they need in-depth training with the trainer, not just two days. 14 dogs is crap. How are they trained? Who trained? I know, how long ago? Who's following up? Like, what's going on? This is, organization is horrible. Where's the Facebook group? No barking, but dangerous dog. I mean, he might not be dangerous, but he's definitely highly distracted. Um, I'd have to look at the dog's body language again to see what's going on. Anne joined, and Michael joined, and Julie's joined. Nice to see you guys. Okay, we are almost done with this article, and then I'm going to wrap it up and probably just save these in my tabs so I can, like, research them later. <laughs> uh, Moy got her dog Hachi in 2016 and paid the People's Company $11,000 for him. Hachi was supposed to paw her if her blood sugar was out of range. Hachi was never a reliable alerter. If I got into his face and asked for the paw, sure, he would give me his paw, but there was never any link to the scent of my breath and whether my blood sugar was high or whether my blood sugar was low. When Peoples agreed to refund some of her money, it was conditioned on her singing a non disclosure oh, signing, <laughs> singing, it's getting late. Uh, it's only nine. Signing a non-disclosure agreement bearing her from discussing the company with others. He says he required the agreement because he didn't want it publicly known that he was providing a refund. She refused to sign, leaving several thousand dollars on the table. Listen, guys, what do you think? Why do you think he's he did that? Like, is it his pride? Is it that he... I mean, it sounds like pride. It sounds like there might be some other uh, service dog organizations in his area that know about him. And it sounds like he wants to keep saying, I never had a dog returned, right? Because how many times do people say that? 
how many times do these macho dog trainers be like, I've never failed a dog. I've saved dogs from shelters. I've da 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 And I think it's just for him to be able to say something. Just because she signed it don't mean it ain't true that you'd had a dog return because you're a shitty trainer. Sorry. Now, through the Facebook group, Moise says she's heard from dozens of people's clients. Some have struggled with dogs that are too aggressive or have other problems, and some are happy. Yeah, um, sounds like he's does not know what he's doing. A happy paradox. Okay. Last paragraph? Last paragraph! Okay. While researchers have found little evidence that dogs can reliably sniff out blood sugar changes, they have encountered a kind of paradox. People who get alert dogs tend to do better with their dis diabetes. Okay. They may just be more engaged with their diabetes, says Gondor Frederick, the researcher. They may be checking their blood glucose much more often than they used to. The dog is sort of a pleasant reminder of diabetes. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible sentence. A dog is a pleasant reminder of diabetes. That's terrible. <laughs> Sitting at her kitchen table with Rocky at her feet, Gibson says the dog has helped her feel less alone with her disease. That's despite the fact, she says, he doesn't work well when he's scared from a thunderstorm or from some other noise. Guys, that's so basic. You do that when they're a puppy. There's soundtracks that you play as they're sleeping and as they're doing normal things throughout the day, it's just basic. It's, it's so basic. And he doesn't alert to blood sugar changes at the rate she says the vendor promised. 80% of the time. Also, yeah, that's minimum. 80% is minimum. Um, also, she complains that he was trained to alert her by jumping on her. And she says he's more than half her weight. <laughs> I find that funny. Um, I mean, it's, it's, ugh. ah, that's why you don't buy a service dog because it's not tailored to you as much as it should be. And there's a wait list. You should just train your own, just train your own dog. Gosh, darn it. Um, or trace, trust it, or get one from somebody you trust and research the company, something, something, come on. Still gives and says, this will be just times that he'll come and put his head on my leg and just look up at me as if he understands in some way that I'm go what I'm going through. He's always there for me, glorified pet. But she says, I felt sorry that Rocky is an animal was chosen to do a job he wasn't equipped to do. That's not fair to the animal. This is very true. The dog was not given the tools that he needed to do his job. Plain and simple. Neither is it fair for me as the recipient of a 15,000 specially trained dog I would scratch that out and rewrite supposedly a specially trained dog that isn't capable of doing his job. She says she plans to try to retrain Rocky herself despite his guarantee, quote unquote, she has no plans to send him back. Yeah. Um, I mean, at this point, you think these guys are just pulling dogs from the shelters and selling them for $15,000? <laughs> I mean, with that lunging of that lab, you just picked a dog about the shelter off the streets and sold it for 15 grand. That's a, that's a scheme. That's something more people are going to be getting into. Good Lord. Crying out loud. Okay. That is it uh, for tonight. Thank you so much for chatting. Uh, Ingrid has the last few comments. No barking, dangerous dog. Please send me links. Sounds like he's trying to hide the crap dogs. He's falsely trained. Always happens, right? Um, there's a <laughs> company here around this, these parts. It is a quickly growing franchise and um, they use certain tools and tactics in their dog training. And they also apparently in encourage abuse of dogs and have been sued for that in the past, as well as the death of dogs for board and train programs. So you really need to be careful who you go to, do your research and just take a look in the local news on Google and Google their names. Like Google my name in the news. I'm not in there yet. I'm not in there for anything yet. Um, it's all gonna be positive things, but you know, Google your people. I hope Gibson can train the dog other behaviors now to remind her. Now to remind her test. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining. This will be available for replay. And if you guys are interested, and learning more about service dogs, 
or know somebody who is considering a service dog but hasn't yet pulled the trigger, I am starting a free workshop in a Facebook group this Monday at noon. I will be live streaming every single day for this workshop, free education about service dogs, how to prepare for one, how to do it the right way and not end up like these poor people in these uh, topics and news stories. A reminder to test. Okay, for like reliability, yeah. Um, so if you're interested, send me a PM. I will send you an invite to the group. Again, it starts tomorrow at noon and I will see you guys on a later one. All right. I will see you guys next week and uh, have a good one. Bye.